Hello everyone, Sableye here and welcome to the channel. Today we are here, we are going to be going over some of the Pokemon that I feel are very underutilized right now in the Regulation E metagame. So to kick things off, we're going to get things started. We're going to start off with Iron Iron Hands, that can't be right. Fluttermane? Landorus? Tornadus? I, I, I clearly got the wrong cue cards, I'll be back in a bit. Okay. We are back, producer has been fired, um, but more importantly, we've got the correct list. And the correct list, we're going to start things off with Ogre Pond base form. Now, or Teal Mask form, whatever you really want to call it, but I don't like calling it Teal Mask because then it gets confusing because you're not actually holding a mask. But more importantly, I think Ogre Pond, once again, guys, it's not like a completely niche pick here. I did want to start off with a little bit more of a basic one. But I, I think for what it's worth, like we've seen the fire and the water ones consistently throughout VDC since the release. Uh, we've seen the rock one a little bit, mostly as a sturdy uh, user. I'll get to that in a little bit. Of, in a little bit, like I'm gonna quickly touch upon that before I switch off of Ogre Pond. But this grass one, this base form, whatever you want to call it, has a niche of the fact that it's capable of holding an item. You could slap maybe something like a choice band if you wanted to go crazy. You could go a scope lens if you wanted to go crazy, right? You can do a lot of cool things with this Pokemon. But I think one of the biggest things that Ogre Pond wants to do is be capable of dealing with Urshifu with or without their Scarf. So generally speaking, right, Urshifus, if they're not Scarfed, you're going to just outpace at 165. But if they are Choice Scarfed, and the best part is you get your speed boost now when you Terrastralize on this version of the Ogre Pot, right? So if they're Scarfed, you can just go Terra, outpace, blow them back. Simple. No big deal. You know that? They're just gone. They're just off the field. You also get the luxury of Ivy Cudgel being the grass move. Meaning, you get to have other options. So you can technically run maybe something like an Encore if you wanted to. I don't like that. I think with Defiant, you really, really want to be going offensive. I think like Ivy Cudgel and I think Stomping Tantrum is a really, really good option. Because right now, what are the two big fire types in the game? Heatran, Arcanine, Hisuian. Both are four times weak to Stomping Tantrum, and they cannot intimidate you. In fact, if the Arcanine tries to intimidate you, you're going to be at plus one. So, the Stomping Tantrum is incredible, incredible coverage versus those two. So now my, now you're saying your Grass type is not going to be losing to Heatran or Arcanine, which is good on its own. I, I am shocked that this thing has not seen more usage. Obviously, Jamie Boyd piloted it very well in Toronto. I believe they got top four, question mark. Uh, but either way, like I said, there is niche for this Pokemon. It deserves to see more usage, and I strongly advise trying it out, right? Like I said, I already mentioned to believe the scope lens and stuff, right? But you could even go Focus Sash if you were that scared of losing, maybe losing to like Shen Pao. Just, I'm Sash now, I'm just gonna not die, right? Like, I, there's a lot of options with this thing because you have the ability to hold an item. And that's really what I'm getting at with this. Uh, alternatively speaking, the Ogre Pond Rock Form. Uh, or Cornerstone, whatever you want to call it, is an incredible, incredible support Pokemon in terms of going follow me and allowing either Trick Room or any sort of setup to go off because of the fact that it has Sturdy, right? So your big niche here is clicking follow me. And because you're going to follow me, you're going to be able to eat two attack, guaranteed to redirect both attacks if they're both single target. Just let them both go into you. Your partner has a free turn. And that is huge on its own, let alone... <coughs> excuse me let alone on 100% accurate, what is effectively Stone Edge, realistically speaking, this is incredible, right? It's These two forms of Ogre Pond are obviously underused because they're not as splashable on teams, right? You don't build a 5-mod team and say, what's a good last mod here? Oh, let's just randomly throw a base Ogre Pond or let's randomly throw an Ogre Pond Cornerstone, right? You throw the other two on because they're, they're the common ones, they're the better ones, right? They're the more universal, they're the more versatile mods that you can just kind of throw on a team, right? But these two forms of Ogre Pond are really, really being slept on right now, and I think I needed to mention it. Pokemon number two, which I think is getting up there along the lines of being more recognized right now, especially with the uh, Gavin Michaels, Justin Tang, and Jiliang Tang team from Toronto with the Pelipper and the Salamence stuff right there. Uh, actually, Aaron, I believe, just featured that team on his channel. Uh, I'll leave that down below if you guys are interested in that. But more importantly, this Salamence here, it's, it's one of those things where, and I've said it before, I believe, I believe it was actually on the podcast where I said that special attacking flying types have a niche, 
and it's not being explored right now. And this is exactly one of them. Now I get it. You're technically a physical attacker, but with the Pelipper, and you pair this thing with the Pelipper, you pair it in rain, all of a sudden you have 100% accurate hurricanes. And that, I think, is the niche of Salamence, let alone the fact that you're an Intimidator, and you are resisting both forms of the Urshifu Stab. Now, granted, Urshifu Stab is going to do a lot, but being able to resist the Surging Strikes is always nice. Being able to resist the Close Combat as well. Just being able to resist both, not have to play that mind game of, oh, well... If I tear into a dragon type, well, now I'm going to go down to the surging. Now I'm going to go down to close combat. Or if I, you know, or like, well, I can switch out here. But if they call the switch, right, I just resist both. I don't have to care. I can just sit there and I can probably blow it back with a hurricane. No questions asked. I do think Salamence, of course, is better suited on something like a rain team. You do have other cool options as well in like Tailwind. Uh, does this thing get Breaking Swipe? You do not. Brick Break is kind of cool, though. Breaking Swipe would be very, very cool. Unfortunately, you do not get it. Um... You get Dragon Ants if you really wanted to, but I think, like I said with Salamence, the niche here is being an Intimidator that's not immediately going to lose to Urshifu, which is very, very difficult to find in this format. And then you also have that special flying type coverage, which covers a huge chunk of the metagame right now, right? Because, like, generally speaking, a lot of things are weak to flying. But a lot of things, the, the flying right now, or at one point in the meta, was Landorus, right? That was your flying coverage, you know, and outside of Bleak Windstorm, right? But... You know, Landorus was going to be that flying coverage. So people, what players would do is they'd say, well, I can just intimidate it. I don't care that I'm weak to flying. I'll get an intimidate. I'll, I'll bulk it. It's not a big deal. Landorus is sc uh, scarfed anyways more often than not. It has to pick if it's going to lock into that. I can just switch to a resistance. But having special flying is a lot more difficult to deal with. I can't intimidate this thing. I Granted, I could like, run Snarl. But if you guys can show me a Pokemon that's like effectively running Snarl right now, uh, I would be appreciative of that, but I can't find it. So I think Salamence should still consider continue to see an uptick in usage. Its typing is always really, really good. We've saw we've seen it work with uh, the Dragonite, right? But and obviously you're not doing the same damage output as Dragonite. But I do think it's a cool little niche that def definitely needs to be explored. So while we're on the topic of of uh, typings that resist both of the Urshifu stabs. Let's go Gyarados. And once again, another Intimidator that doesn't lose to Urshifu. I think this Pokemon is once again underexplored. Now, obviously, Gyarados has fallen off quite a bit because it was very popular back in, I believe it was like the Regulation B, Regulation C era, right? And it was pretty popular, right? You had like that whole New Balance team with the Amoongus and the Chiyu and the Tinglu, right? And the Gyarados was the Intimidator on that variant. But like... I think it's kind of fallen, like, it has fallen into, I have not seen this Pokemon at all in Regulation E, and I don't think it deserves that. Does it deserve to fall off a little bit? Yeah, it does it get outclassed a little bit? Yes. But at the same time, you still have cool tools, right? You have cool tools like the Thunder Wave, the Waterfall, right? If you wanted to, you could almost go with, like, a Dragon Dance set. I'm not as loving the Dragon Dance set, right? You don't get that immediate Terra Fairy. So you don't get that immediate flying type unless you Terra Flying, right? So it's not as optimal, I don't think, with the Dragon Dance because, like, you'd want to have that Terra and you want to be using your Terra on the Gyarados. But I think here, once again, the defensive Gyarados is still very, very good and severely underutilized in this format. Like, what else you get? You get Dragon Tail if you really want it to be cheeky and try to stop Trick Room. You could go for that. I don't think it's needed because you do also get Taunt, which just, once again, Amoongus is up uh, on the Uprise right now. Boom, get taunted, get out of here. I'm sorry, you can't do anything anymore, Amoongus. Um, Thunder Wave, oh, you're going to go Tailwind? Well, I'm going to Thunder Wave you, you're going to get paralyzed and knocked back down. Obviously, it's not the same as just like matching a Tailwind or having Tailwind of your own, but it is definitely a support piece that I think has fallen off a little bit more than it, than, than, than warranted, you know? Like, it really should, it really shouldn't have, right? I mean, technically, does this thing get Hurricane? I think it might get Hurricane. I'm, I'm actually very curious. Yeah, uh, technically, if you wanted to make it special, you could. Uh, I wouldn't advise it with your base 60 special attack. But, I mean, in theory, if you wanted your special flying coverage, you could go for it that way. Um, but I think that's... Uh, but that's it, guys. Like, Gyarados is... It's just a mod that, like, I don't think should have fallen off nearly as much. It can still be utilized to effectiveness. And it's a water type. Guys, how many water types are in this format right now? Urshifu? Ogre Pond? Dondozo doesn't really count because I can't really put Dondozo on like, as like as like a last slot if I need a water type, right? I don't think Dondozo really counts. The problem is wasting your water type slot with Gyarados 
means that you'd have to not have an Urshifu, which is where the things go, ha ha, joke's on you, you don't have an Urshifu, <laughs> right? And, and that's where it feels a little less, little less good because like having an Urshifu, it, I'm not going to say it's required, guys, but it definitely just makes the game a little bit easier. I, I don't know how else to say it. You know, the mod is incredibly broken and there's no real reason to not use it. However, this is a very cool way to try and break that, right? You can kind of sit in front of it fairly well. Um, once again, if you wanted to go special, you could. I do. I wouldn't mind having that flying move. So maybe do you do go Terrorblast flying to actually hit the Urshifus? Uh, does this thing still get power up? I know it used to. It does not. That's a little unfortunate. Because uh, that could be another cool way to kind of, kind of sit in front of uh, sit in front of the Urshifu and then actually ha hit it back without having to Terra. But there's sure there's options. I'm sure you can find them. But I think Gyarados definitely needs to be a little bit explored. Should really start uh, seeing an uptick in usage, in my opinion. Okay, let's talk Weezing now, okay? Why, why would we not talk Weezing? I mean, Weezing is one of those Pokemon that is the definition of anti-meta. That is the definition of, I'm going to try and control the board state more so than you can. Neutralizing Gas, incredible ability. Turns off all abilities on the field. So now you're turning things off. Like Shen Pao's ability, you're turning off uh, Dragonite's ability, so you could technically intimidate it, but you can't because you're turning off your own intimidate. Unless you have ability shield on intimidator. I'll throw Landers in here for now, right? And you go ability shield, and this means hey, you're not. I'm not turning off my own ability, so I can still intimidate you. You can no longer intimidate me because I have Weezing on the field, so I can we lead Landers and Weezing be an incredible physical wall, right? Like the, the physical bulk on Weezing is incredible. All right, so you wall out those physical attackers, pair that with something like an ability shield intimidate user, and all of a sudden you have a strong core. Obviously there's been variants of this team that have seen success. I believe it was Alex Underhill. Uh, was it Sacramento? Question mark? I'm not certain if it was Sacramento or Peoria. Regardless, it was one of them. Uh, and I believe they got top 16 with a Weezing team and a Weezing variant, which it's seen usage. But I definitely think it's something that is a little underexplored. Obviously, I think the limits of what you can do with we with Weezing are there, and there's only so much you can do with it, and there's only so many ways to close the teams. But I do definitely think Weezing is an interesting option that is being kind of overlooked right now. Obviously, it had, like I said, it had that one little uptick at one point. But with a month left of the format, I still think Weezing can definitely make an impact, right? Obviously, you get stuff excuse me, like Will-O-Wisp, you get stuff like Taunt for Trick Room, right? And then you get, like, probably want to go either a Gunk Shot or a Sludge Bomb if you're going to go physical or special. Depends on the team. I like Gunk Shot because it puts on a little bit more pressure. Like, people actually have to be scared of Gunk Shot connecting, at least in my opinion. Destiny Bond is also a cool option. I don't advise it, but it's kind of cool. Uh, Haze is very cool if you're really worried about Dondozo. But then again, with Weezing, you actually shut that down unless they're running Ability Shield Tatsugiri. So that's pretty cool. Um, you got Protect if you really wanted to, which I think is also a very valid option. Never, I'm never going to say no to a Pokemon if you want to put Protect on it. Except unless you have like a Choice Scarf or something along those lines. But I think Protect is always a good move, especially on a Pokemon like Weezing. In fact, I think it's really good on a Pokemon like Weezing. Because when I play Weezing, or when I play against Weezing, my goal is, realistically speaking, how can I get this Weezing off the field effectively? And if they have Protect, I can't just safely, you know, like, get rid of it immediately turn one. I actually have to think and see. Maybe they're going to Protect. Maybe you can burn a turn. Like, you know your opponent's going to try and hit the Weezing? Nope, sorry, I'm just going to Protect. It's not going to happen. Keep that Neutralizing Gas on the field for one more turn. And just allow your other Pokemon to do some things, right? Weezing, like I said, it is the definition of I am going to shut you down. I actually believe, now that I'm thinking about it, Wolf actually, I believe, just won a big online tour with Weezing as well. So I, I, I'd imagine he's going to make a video on that. But uh, Weezing, really, really cool Pokemon. Completely underrated. It definitely benefits in the ability to have, like, it just gives you tools to win. And, and I think that's what a lot of people, or a lot of balanced players like in this format, right? You know, they're looking for tools and a Pokemon that can kind of give you abilities to just kind of win. And Weezing is exactly that. It's a Pokemon that if played properly and positioned well can give you the tools to win a game outright. And I think that is really, really, really strong and needs to be utilized. Okay, we're going to quickly go over Glamora. And then there's one more as well. I don't want this video to lag on too much. My big thing with these guys is just to kind of give you guys ideas. I'm not trying to sit here and build 
sets for all of these Pokemon. I'm just trying to spark ideas in hopes that maybe you guys see something here that you like and you can take and bring onto your teams, right? So with the Glamora, we're going to go really quickly here. Uh, I don't think it's anything too crazy, right? Glamora has been around since Series 1. Uh, a lot of us know kind of what it's used for. Toxic Debris, get hit by a physical attack. Toxic Spikes go up on the opposing side of the field. Really, really strong. In my opinion, that ability is incredible. Generally, you see stuff like Glamora paired with the Dondozo because then you get the poison, the Dondozo sits there, and your opponent is also not only having trouble hitting the Dondozo, they're also taking slow chip damage themselves, right? Definitely always a valid core. Not going to complain about that. That's, that's a good core. But I think there's still something else to be said about Glamora on a balancey version of a team, maybe on a more defensive team rather as opposed to that Dondozo, right? Because, like, it's very clear how good Glamora is with Dondozo, but I think there's something to be said maybe where Glamora isn't paired with Dondozo, right? Let's just say now you have Glamora on your team and you have a Fluttermane and you just happen to have a Fluttermane on your team because that's not unheard of, right? On these choice specs versions of Fluttermane, what's your last move normally? Nine times out of ten, your last move is useless. But now with a Glamora on my field, I can have Hex. Right? I can lead Glamora. I'm either going to get Toxic Spikes off if they're going to hit me. Maybe if they don't hit me, well, I'm just going to double poison you. I'm just going to poison both of you. Simple as that. You know, I'm just going to poison both of you. We're going to move on. Uh, and then my Fluttermane can come in late game. And, oh, hey, you're poisoned. My Hex is now going to do double the damage. It is now a base 130 special attack coming off of a Specs Fluttermane. Uh, I don't know. That sounds pretty good to me. Right? So as it is normally used on those defensive teams... I do think there's an option and an opening for maybe Glamora to see fit into another way, into another form of team that's not necessarily Dondozo, those Dondozo teams. Hey, I still think it's a good Pokemon. I think it's incredibly good. Focus Sash is also cool. Force them to hit you twice, you know? Because hitting, hitting me once is cool, but hitting me twice gets me the Toxic Spikes rather than actually getting me just the regular Poison, right? Which also feels incredible. I think Glamora is... Serious letters left, you get cool text like Earth Power, which with Glamora, you can kind of go crazy speed because you, you're not going to run. If you run if you pull a max speed Jolly Arcanine and get outpaced by it, I mean, you cry a little bit, but that's fine. You're still focused after you just still Earth Power back, right? So you can just kill Earth, uh, you can kill Arcanines with that. You can kill off the uh, Heat Trans with it as well. Uh, your poison typing allows you to be able to switch into Fluttermane Moonblast, which a lot of things actually cannot do effectively. So being able to switch into Poison uh, Fluttermane Moonblast feels incredible. Uh, Focus Sash actually allows you to switch into anything if you technically wanted to look at it that way. It, it's just a really good mod. You get coverage options like Energy Ball if you wanted to. The biggest concern though is like you're dying to Surging Strikes. However, if they Surging Strikes you, you get the reward of the fact that, hey, now I've got Toxic Spikes up and they are actually going to be fully up. They're going to Toxic anything else that switches in. So if you can deal with that and effectively utilize Glamora, in that regard, I, like trade Glamora for Toxic Spikes and let everything else get toxic and deal with Urshifu. That feels okay to me, if you ask me. I mean, it's looking for positive trades, and I think Glamora gives you the ability to do that. We're going to finish this one off with the Reggie Drago. And guys, Reggie Drago is nothing new. Like I said, it's been around since Sword and Shield. This is why I kind of kept these ones till the end here, right? Like it, It's nothing new. It's nothing surprising. It's also seen an uptick in usage. I believe Ragav just got third at a regional with it. And there is tons of reasons why Reggie Drago is good. Obviously, as we do know, Reggie, Reggie Alecki actually got nerfed its uh, ability to 1.3. Reggie Drago didn't get that nerf. Apparently, Game Freak said this mod is completely balanced. And it's now Dragon Moves are becoming 1.5 times. That's pretty strong. Then you pair it with effectively what is Dragon Water Spout in Dragon Energy. And you're just going to do insane amounts of damage. Like, there is no switch into this. I'm sorry. You run Dragon Fang just to, once again, farther boost your Dragon moves because there's really no reason not to. Uh, you probably do a defensive Terra because I feel like Terra Dragon is a little bit greedy. You don't need it. It's cool, but you don't need it. Um, but Dragon Energy is disgusting. Like, I switched into my Heatran onto this thing one time, and I still took 40-something percent. And I was like, excuse me? Hello? What is going on? This move on its own is incredible. You pair this with the proper speed control and the proper partners to deal with the fairy typings. Reggie Drago goes insane. Absolutely insane. Like, there, there's no... Like, I'm not even exaggerating. This mon does dumb damage. Like, absolutely dumb amounts of damage. 
Like I'm just, like I said, you switch into resistance, you expect it to, to just not die. Next thing you know, you're taking over 50%. You haven't touched the Reggie Drago yet. And then they're still faster than you because they've set Tailwind and now you're dead. So like if you, there is so many ways to position Reggie Drago around with, especially with all these Tailwind teams coming around right now. You can just have a Reggie Drago position for Tailwind and just be faster than things, right? And right now, what is stopping people from running Urshifu? Well, dragon types, Urshifu does not like a dragon type, right? So, well, then you just, ha what if I just had my own dragon type that Urshifu, once again, doesn't really want to sit in front of because I'm a special attacker, which is far and few between in this format. Then, let alone, now maybe I pair this with my own Urshifu, right? Now they want their dragon type on the field to deal with Urshifu. But my Reggie Drago is just here. I'm clicking Dragon Energy. I'm sorry, your Dragon type is gone. Your Dragon type is just is just eliminated from the field. There, there's nothing you can do. It works a little bit less good in front of like the Dragonite stuff because obviously they have the uh, the Shen Pao beside it. Their E speed is doing a lot of damage, right? You probably can live in E speed, I would imagine, with the HP stat like that. But I don't know if you'd really want to invest in that. Regardless, this mon does insane amounts of damage. I think on the right team, piloted well with the right speed control, this mon goes crazy. And like I said, we saw that in uh, Toronto. Uh, was it Toronto? I believe it was Toronto, right? Ragov got third with it. Either way, regardless, the mon is incredible. It has definitely potential in this format. Like, you you just click Dragon Energy and you kill things. It's like that. That sounds good to me. Sign me up. I I don't know. And of course, guys, just to conclude, this was my list of Pokemon that are underused right now that I think actually serve an incredibly strong niche, needs to be used, needs to be tested a little bit more as Regulation E progresses. Of course, guys, if you have any Pokemon that you want that you think I missed and hey, you say, Ryan, what about this thing? Throw it in the comment section. I would love to hear your opinions for the rest of Regulation E. Um, but with that, guys, if you guys do enjoy this type of content, I really would appreciate a like and a subscribe. It really does help with the channel. And of course, I really do appreciate it. Um, uh, once again, guys, with these types of videos, I don't want to sit here and try to talk about, like, everything that Reggie Drago can do. I don't want to sit here and talk about everything each of these Pokemon can do. So it does kind of feel like, you know, I'm going fairly fast. However, I'm here to just give you guys that, like, I'm here to, like, try and spark that creativity, right? Like, these are Pokemon that I all think could very well be used on the right team given the right circumstances. And I definitely think they need to be tested. But I'm not going to sit here and build sets for them because they're very team dependent. I uh, well, hopefully I can spark some intro... Uh, uh, some creativity in your guys' minds, and we can kind of go from there, right? Like, you can build off some of these ideas now, right? That's really what we're looking for when I do videos like this. So I really do appreciate you guys sitting through it, rambling. If you guys made it this far in the video, you guys are awesome. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you all in a future video.